guys, Patrick here. Welcome back to the SPAC Arena. Today we're going to be talking about APXC that's going to be merging with Halfpoint. This is a Microsoft Cloud Data Management Solution Company, and they are really hyped up right now. You guys probably heard this week, people are really trying to push the price up on this one. But is it warranted? Is this a great company to invest in? Or is it just another hyped up stock that's going to be a flash in the pan and drop back to $10? I'll give you my opinion, right? The pros, the cons. You guys know all my uh, reviews are structured. At first, we'll look at what they're doing now. Then I'll look at where are they going? What's their execution plan? Third, what's their valuation and financials? And fourth, how am I going to be playing this stock? So do me a favor, like and subscribe, and let's get started now. All right, guys, before I get into the review itself, I have two thoughts to share with you. The first one is I'm really excited to bring you guys this review. The reason I say that is in October, it was really depressing being a SPAC investor. You guys know that the share prices were dropping left and right, and I almost stopped making reviews because there were just not any SPACs that really caught my attention and that I thought were really interesting. So now things have changed already. SPACs are back, baby, right? They're all going up like crazy. And this is why I'm saying this. You want to be really careful careful we are in the second bubble already it happened very very quickly as you guys can see this is a stock apex technology apxc that is really hyped up right now in one day up 29 percent and after hours it is up again so before i get into the review i just wanted to you guys to like be full aware that we are in that mania phase where people are just investing tons of money and they don't even know what they're investing in. I'll show you guys something, right, from Reddit. Interesting, I'm new to SPACs. I bought AP, he even spelled it wrong, APTX, because someone told me they were from the future and to trust them. I did zero research beyond that and put my whole account on it besides the amount I was planning on withdrawing anyway. So you guys, you have it here. There's a lot of people dumping money into it. And for them, it, it's like gambling, right? They're not really investing long-term. So you want to be really, really careful when you're doing investments in SPACs right now. Uh, we are in that phase where it, it is a lot of speculation. So make sure that you're really taking a step back and don't fall into a fear of missing out. I don't want you to overpay for stocks. Second thing I want to show you guys real quick is that currently with a lot of these big hypey stocks, a lot of the price action is happening after hours and before the market opens. So between 4 p.m. Eastern and 9.30. This is APXT, which we'll talk about during uh, this review. And as you guys can see, in the last trading day, it closed at 10.99 and then it opened at 14.46. That's $3 difference, right? So if you're not playing during the off hours, Right now, often you're gonna be missing opportunities. Look at what happened last week with my arrival review. Uh, this is when I made it. It, uh, it went up during the night. It went up a lot during the day, but look at the big spike up to $32 after hours. So because of that, I actually decided to sell out. I had E-Trade and Robinhood, so I always figured, hey, I don't need a third account, but Webull asked me to promote them, and right now it really makes sense. Look at those big moves during the off hours. So I decided to open a, an account, and I have the link in the description if you guys want to open an account also, and have access to uh, off hours trading. Right now, if you deposit $100, you get four free stocks it's like free money it makes a lot of sense so if you do open an account let me know in the comments what uh, stocks you end up getting all right, so finally, the new wave of SPACs is attracting high-profile companies, and Halfpoint is one of them. No matter how you want to look at it, it is a company that's established in the market. They have products, they have a lot of revenues, and they have high-profile companies as customers in the S&P 500. So it is a fairly straightforward company to analyze, but for those of you that are not uh, familiar with the basics of a transaction, let's look at it real quick. So Halfpoint is going to be merging with Apex. APXT, and they were underwritten at a $2 billion valuation, which we'll look at later. So they are going to be merging in the first quarter of 2021. And same with Arrival, we're looking at the end of February, early March, depending on when the uh, how backed up the SEC is. So there's a lot of time left, at least three months. So you don't need to FOMO and all of that, right? There's going to be a lot, a lot of opportunities to open a position on this one. So they have been underwritten at 9x the 2021 revenues. So this 
this is at the IPO price of $10, and we'll look at it a little bit more in detail later. But just keep in mind that compared to other tech plays, as you guys know that 2020 is the year of tech. So all of those tech companies have really been bid up a lot. So 9X is a fairly conservative multiplier, and there's nothing wrong there. So one thing that I noticed, and no one has talked about it yet, which I find very ironic, is that the half point shareholders will be paid $257 million in cash. So you guys know how LCA and Tillman Fertitta had $250 million in debt paid off and how much outrage that caused. And a lot of people did not want to invest in this company because of that. Well, here you have basically the same thing, except instead of going to pay debt, it literally goes into the executive's pockets there at Halfpoint. So we as shareholders of the new company are not going to see this $257 million ever again. It is being taken out of the company and we're getting nothing out of it. So it is very ironic that people were like very outraged about LCA, but this company has a lot of hype and no one's talking about this. Now, is there anything wrong with it? Absolutely not. This happens all the time, right? And I can understand it. It's not fun, but it is the way that these transactions are made. The shareholders of Halfpoint have to get something to uh, agree to merge with the SPAC. So if we look at the management teams of both companies, right, we have Jeff Epstein and Brad Koenig for uh, Apex, and those guys are great, nothing to complain here. One thing I want to point, uh, point your attention to is that Brad Koenig was a global head of technology investment banking at Goldman Sachs, and he oversaw 200 plus tech IPOs and 100 plus uh, merger and acquisition transactions. So the guy has a ton of experience when it comes to analyzing and valuing tech companies, and I think they did a pretty good, uh, they got a pretty good deal here and we're going to be reaping the benefits from that if we look at the management team for half point you have tj jang and kai gong both of those are the two main guys for the company and again nothing wrong here if you look at their experience all of these people have been working for fortune 500 companies so it is one of those companies that i call uh, made by wall street for wall street and i'm going to spoil the end a little bit here the company is going to be successful because of that. These are all uh, people that are very experienced and know how to create shareholder value. Jeff Epstein and Brad Koenig are going to be part of the new company and, you know, it is going to be successful. So we know that Halfpoint is a tech company, but what exactly do they do for those of you that are less technical? So my understanding is that they help companies, their customers, integrate with Microsoft's cloud platform, Azure. So the cloud is when you put your files on remote servers and then you have access throughout your network. As opposed to if you leave your files on your computer or your server, well, only you have access to it. So think about it like Dropbox, right? I have these files on my laptop as I'm filming this, but then it's going to be automatically update, uploaded on the cloud on uh, Dropbox servers, and then I'll have access to it on my computer, desktop, and then on my phone. Well, this is the same thing, but on a much larger scale with much larger teams. So there are two main players in this industry. There's Amazon Web Services, that is the big dog, and then you have the Microsoft platform, Azure, that is gaining some traction, mostly because all these companies are already using Microsoft Microsoft products, Microsoft 365, you know, uh, you have uh, Word, you have Excel. So all these companies are using these Microsoft products and it kind of makes sense that some of them are going to want to integrate all in one instead of piecemealing it with Amazon here, Microsoft, Adobe, and having all these different service providers. So now if Microsoft offers an all-in-one solution, a lot of companies are going to go with that. And this is where Halfpoint comes in. They kind of bridge these customers and L Help them integrate that system because that's not really their specialty. This is part of their customer base. As you guys can see, it is extremely diversified. You do not have any concentration here. It goes from NBC, Disney, ESPN, uh, Hershey's, you know, a chocolate maker. You have insurance companies, you have governments, right? The IRS, US Department of State, and then you have tech companies like WorldPay. So it, it's the gamut of different industries. So no matter where we are in the economic cycle, right, whether one industry is hot and the other ones are not doing that well, they're already they're always going to have some parts of their business that is flourishing. So this is one more pro for the company, right? The diversification. And then uh, if you look at it, currently they have, there's about 250 million Microsoft 365 users and Halfpoint claims that they own 3% of the market share. So they service 
3% of those 250 million for 7 million half point users. Now, according to them, this will grow in the future, 500 million users for Microsoft, then they think that they can get 10% market penetration, which is pretty significant. That would give them 50 million users, an increase of what, like 8X maybe? So where does the company go from here? How do they grow and build shoulder value for you guys? Well, there's three key areas. The first one is going to be increasing naturally their customer base as Microsoft's platform grows. So right now, if they have 250 million users, as the platform grows to 500 million users, that's going to help Halfpoint get more customers, right? That makes sense. You always want to be in area in industries that are growing. That really helps your companies that you're investing in. This is one of them. So the other aspect of it is that currently, if they only have 3% market penetration, that that means that there's 250 million users that are not using their solution that they can sell to. So if they can increase their market penetration and the user base is growing, that's a really good recipe for Halfpoint to be very successful. Now, there are two other aspects of it, right? The first one is upselling your current customers and you already have a relationship with them. They're already using your product and they're happy with the product. So if you develop other products that are helping them, often they will be willing to uh, purchase them, right? And you'll have a fairly good margin on those. So upselling to your current customers is usually the best way to increase your bottom line. And then the third one is the most difficult one is going to be uh, joint ventures and merger acquisitions. They can either grow sideways, right? Companies are competing with them. They can just buy them out or they can be more vertically integrated. So we're almost done, but now let's get into the part of the video that you guys like, which is the revenues, the valuation, and how can we play this stock to make profits? In the end, that's all that matters is how can we get richer with this stock? So their revenues are split in two. They get some money up front, and then the back end, their subscription model is what brings them a lot of recurring revenues. So in 2020, they have 148 million in total revenues, but 115 million is recurring. These are customers that you, by investing in this company, are already getting that they already have those customers and year after year as they get new ones it's like little building blocks that add up and add to their revenues and these unless like uh, microsoft's platform becomes irrelevant these are just going to keep renewing year after year as long as they use microsoft cloud so in 2020 right they have 148 million this is going to jump up to 193 million so an increase of 30 percent that's pretty healthy growth and then the recurring revenue is going to grow to uh, 157 36 percent increase now let's look at the gross profit margin that's the other great part about tech companies is that since they're selling either software or services that are very highly value added right they're not making products in a factory and then selling it to retail customers that has low margins now when you're selling software or services that are like high tech this is very high profit margin and that's why those tech companies get a much higher multiplier so one, uh, they're getting 72% in profit margin uh, in 2020, and this should be pretty stable, right? 72% in 2021. They think they can increase it to 74% in 2022 on their 257 million in total revenue. So as you guys can see, this company is not having massive explosive growth. And we've seen companies like Arrival that are projecting ridiculous numbers, like 300% increase one year and 500% in the next year. We're not going to get that with a company like this that is more mature, but at 30%, that compares very favorably with companies on the NASDAQ right now, which often like the really good ones are going to grow maybe 20% in a year. So at 30%, that is very healthy. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not going to be the next Amazon. This is not going to be the next Microsoft, right? It is a much, much smaller company and their, nar their focus is very narrow. They're focusing on one niche. So because of that, like you can't expect that this company is going to totally blow up. But if they can keep going up 30% per year, you can expect a nice increase in their valuation over time. So as for the company's valuation, at 199 million shares times the IPO price of $10, that gave the company a value of $2 billion, minus the money that they're going to have in their account, $252 million. That gives the company a valuation of $1.73 billion, and then that was a 9x multiplier on their 2021 revenue. Very conservative underwriting, pretty favorable to investors, I believe. Now, of course, the share price has started to run up already, right? It's at 1420 as of me filming this. 
uh, when the market closed. It went up after that, after hours. But with the 1420, that would give the company a valuation of $2.57 billion. And how does that compare with others? Let's use that 13x multiplier just to keep it really easy, right? Well, it compares, like it's pretty average for uh, companies uh, that are comparable to it. So all these companies, as you guys can see, range between 11.8x to 22.9x. So these are companies that have fairly high growth, right? Uh, compounded annual growth rate for half point, they say is 32%. Well, these companies are from 20%, 23. This one's the lowest at 18, right? So all those, out of those companies in the low 20%, as you guys can see, their revenue multiplier is about 11 to 22x. So half point at 1420, 2.5 billion is getting to that average, right? It's not super overpriced, but it's not super underpriced either. It's priced about right right now, but being that we're in 2020 and the market is hot, people don't really even care about the valuation. I showed you guys Reddit poster that said that he doesn't even know what he invested in. I do think it's going to keep going up. Now let's look at the price action more closely. All right, guys, in the wrap up, what do I think about this stock? How am I going to be playing it? And what do I think is going to happen with the share price? Well, let's kick things off by saying that I think it's a nice little company. I've mentioned it throughout the video. Nothing wrong with it. I think it's going to have nice, steady growth over time. But at the same time, keep in mind, keep your expectations low. This is not going to be in the next Facebook. It's not going to be in the next Microsoft. I think this is going to be a nice little growth stock and it's going to get my seal of approval. But I do need to be the preacher for the moment. There is a lot of pump and dump going on in the market right now be extremely careful i've seen this a lot lately right a lot of these guys are buying them at 11 dollars, and then they're using influencers to bring the share price up they're telling you that this is the best stock that's ever come into the stock market and it's going to explode in price and make you rich it's just not going to do that right yes it might go up in value but keep your expectations reasonable right don't get into fomo all they want is for suckers to bid this price uh share price up to 25 30 dollars and that's not right to me that's completely unethical i don't have a position in this stock right now so my opinion is as unbiased as i can make it in fact if the price goes up it goes against me because it's going to be harder for me to buy shares and open a position. So I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible, but whenever you do your due diligence and you watch videos, you read Twitter, stock tweets, uh, Reddit, whatever platform you're using, try to see if these guys have ulterior motives, right? If they already have a position, keep that in mind. They want the stock price to go up. So they're going to try to sell this as the best stock ever. So with that said, right, it was 11. It jumped up to 1892 in the off hours. When you have a parabolic move like that, it's always going to retrace. So it opened lower, then it closed at 1420 on Friday. And then it uh, ended the day after hours at 1497. So this to me is a good short-term momentum play because of that hype but also it's a good long-term buy and hold play depending on the price depending on the cost basis that i can get the stock wouldn't be upset about getting uh, exposure to this stock long term so in the short term i do expect the stock price is going to go to 2025 like that's what they're trying to push it up to so if i can get it for like say like 16 it's probably going to open in the green uh on monday right because of that hype so it's probably going to open at 16 or something like that if i can get it for 16 and then sell it for 22 or something like that that would be great and then in the long term i do expect it's going to retrace these guys are going to move on to the next hype stock right and then they're not going to really care about what happens with apex so eventually i do expect it's going to retrace back so it's probably going to go back to 15 over time right a couple of weeks before the merger is usually a good time to open a long-term buy and hold position or of course after the merger like when the uh, warrants become exercisable there's always a lot of selling pressure so that's when i'm going to be looking to open my buy and hold position around $15. I don't want to pay more than 16 or something like that, right? Anything above 20 to me is overpriced for this stock. It is a good little company, right? Nothing wrong with it. But once again, price is the ultimate factor that makes it whether it's a good play or a bad play. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. And do you agree with my statement? Are you going to be really careful about like not overpaying for this and not uh, getting into FOMO? Let me know what you guys think. I really enjoy your comments. I'll see you guys in the next video.